Today, another installment in our recent half-baked series of broken appliance repair videos that we've been having here on the channel. And I didn't plan it that way. It's just that every appliance in my house has been breaking at the same time, which I guess is the way the universe works. Uh, and half-baked, you'll see what I mean in a moment. This is our venerable Bosch HDS 255U range, which we bought in November of 2004 and was probably manufactured in Huntington Beach in July of 2004, so it's almost 20 years old. And how do I know all that information? Because I go and I open the uh, warming drawer, which like you, we never use for warming, but it's filled with, uh, you know, cookie sheets and uh, muffin pans and whatnot. And to the right of the uh, drawer is a tag that gives that information, plus a slash 01 after that model number, meaning this is production run 01. If you break that model number down, the uh, HDS means that, uh, D means it's dual fuel, meaning that it's uh, gas on top and an electric oven. S means it's standalone, uh, which at the time you could get a high-end standalone, uh, which means this makes no pretense of trying to be built into the counter and the, the controls are up here on top where, you know, I like them. And, um, and the H, we believe is probably, we're just guessing, is probably the German word heard for cooker. So that's the HDS. And if you break the 255U, the first two digits, the 25 mean this is the, the highest feature model. 24 is mid-range, 23 is less. And, you know, high, the 25 probably means they threw in a meat thermometer and an extra oven rack, and that's it, you know. But, uh, so this, is, this was the best of the best at the time. And then the five is a code for stainless steel. There are other codes for uh, black, white, and um, biscuit, I think, is the other color. This is a, a touch and turn control. Uh, because it has a touch screen and then this knob, great idea, this knob to kind of flip through all the menus and set the temperature and do all the, the things that require making choices. And uh, ranges in this series went on for another, oh, I don't know, six or seven years. I know uh, there's a 700 series of these. They were making them in 2012. So uh, they made them for quite a while. These days, the parts are kind of unobtainium. Um, so you wind up, you know, going on eBay and buying used stuff. So a little worried about that. Anyway, back in November, this stopped heating or it wouldn't get up to temperature. So I said, great, there's going to be another YouTube video. And I shot a lot of time-lapse stuff with external thermometers showing how, you know, it wouldn't get up to temp and everything. And of course, as I was doing that, it started working perfectly and it has worked fine ever since uh, <laughs> then, except two days ago, all of the heating elements stop working. It won't broil, it won't bake, the warming drawer won't heat, the convection heating uh, won't work either. So all the heating elements are out. So I was able to download a service manual uh, from the internet, uh, and that's not easy either because all these appliance techs and everybody and the manufacturers all try to keep this information out of end users' hands, this sort of rent-seeking behavior that just drives me nuts because when you buy uh, any kind of appliance, you ought to be able to get the, the service manual for it. I will link the service manual below this video for you uh, if you have uh, this model or something similar, and I'll throw a lot of model numbers into the description as, you know, uh, clickbait for the robots to get you to watch this thing. But um, the good news is that's what's made, that having that service manual on the schematic is what's made me an instant expert on this, and it's kind of led me to what I think is the problem with this machine. But let me take you through my thinking and show you what I did to um, uh, uh, figure this out. So please forgive the glare. It's always so maddening trying to shoot this shiny surface in this reflective area, but we'll do the best we can. So there are two circuit boards inside this thing, one down low in the back, which is the power and relay board. It takes the line power in, and then it sends lower voltage uh, power up here to a second board behind this glass, which is the UI and control board, which has the microprocessor on it that runs the whole show. And uh, we know some things just by looking at this. Since the clock is on and working, we know the board is getting powered. So at least the, the power board is, is working somewhat. And the microprocessor is operating because when I turn the knob, you know, it, it does stuff. Uh, turns out that this board has a diagnostic mode in it. So we can run some tests. If you hold down these three buttons, cooking mode, temperature, and start at the same time for five seconds, It beeps and it says test here. It's gone into test. And if I hit, I think it is cooking mode again, it goes into service mode. The difference between test and service mode is that test runs all the tests automatically when you push start, whereas service lets you use the knob to pick each test you want to run. And then you press start generally to run those tests. So if I 
turn this now, you can see I, there's, there's, there's different, um, oh, I guess I have to hit start. All right, so I can test the light, the fan, um, the ring, I guess that's the convection uh, 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 heat, I'm not sure, the broil, the bake element, um, and the warming drawer element can all be tested, and the sensor. So right away, my first thought was, you know, that the sensor is telling the board that it doesn't need to turn on the heat at all, and that's why we're never getting any heat. Uh, but if you run the sensor test here, um, actually, uh, you have to plug in the meat thermometer. Oh, let me do it, hang on. Yeah, the built-in meat thermometer is also considered a sensor for this test, and if it's missing, it'll fail. We had to dig around to find this. It's been buried in the bottom of a drawer forever because we use better, you know, external thermometers than that. And now if we push start, he says, okay. So he thinks the sensors are okay. Now we don't completely trust that, of course, but it, it's likely that they're okay. So then we can move on. Let's see, how do I do I just turn the knob? Yeah, okay. And, um, you know, we can turn on the fan. Don't know if you can hear that, but it's running. We can, uh, let's get to the, the real one, which was baking. My, my wife likes to bake all kinds of stuff, so. And if you do this, it'll heat up to 200 degrees or for two minutes, whatever comes first. But if I do this and reach my hand, you know, down here inside this thing, it's cold as can be. But if you listen carefully when I did that, let me turn it off. Let me do that again. Can you hear that click, click, click? Let me hear. So I've taken the microphone off and turned the record volume up. Can you hear this when I press start? Click, 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 three relays are closing. And that's three relays opening. Click, 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 opening. So that's a really good sign. That means that the control board is sending a signal down to the relay and power board, and the relay and power board is understanding that and closing some relays to turn on some heating elements. But nothing happens, it stays stone cold. So uh, is there another relay that's stuck or is there some other problem? Don't know at this point. For that, we'll have to look at the schematic. But there's a, you know, a lot of other tests you can do in here. There's a, you can test each um, heating element individually. You can test the, um, the door latch that latches when uh, uh, you do the self-cleaning cycle. And I think this ring is convection. I don't know if that means like a ring heating element around the convection fan. Because if I press start now, the, the, the convection fan comes on. Let me turn that off. And you can get out of this self-test mode by pressing off. Anyway, let's go look at the schematic. Oh, there's the meat thermometer right there. Never see that. This is the schematic for my HD255U, and you can see there's a lot of other model numbers that use the same wiring. And there are other variations for gas and electric in the, in the service manual as well. This information is pasted in a sticker on the back of the range, but then you have to pull the range out from the wall to read it, so this is much more convenient. The only downside is that when you print it out, it gets a little fuzzy because it makes it bigger, uh, but we'll do the best we can with that. This isn't as complicated as it looks. I mean, at the bottom are wiring harness color codes and, and um, legends for what the different labels are. So this says like, this is part A and this is the name of part A, tells you what it is. But really to cut this complexity in half, if you put a pencil down here and look on the left side of this, this is kind of a power bus view of the oven and this is sort of a uh, where things are connected view of the oven and it really is more of a uh, wiring diagram than a schematic because you know how the motor relay board actually works what its circuits actually are that's a you know proprietary secret of the company that makes it um, but so if you really want to do, uh, do component level repair on this you'd either have to make some intelligent guesses or reverse engineer it the way I did in the electric blanket video so many years ago. The other thing that's in the service manual that's useful is uh, some photographs that give you the location of all the parts. I'll drop that in here. And you can see it labels, you know, the, the relays, those big black boxes, uh, where they all are. And so you can kind of correlate that picture of where things are to this schematic and, you know, not even have to really open up the unit, which is nice. Or if you do open up the unit, then you'll kind of know your way around. Um, let me do the side that's not interesting first. Um, this is the kind of where things are connected. So this is the power and relay board, this big square here. And um, electricity comes in from the utility here and then uh, some of it goes up to run the uh, cooktop. That's what, what all that is. Um, and you can see that only, um, well, maybe you can't see, but all the cooktop is being run by 120 volts. And then um, since there are three connections to, to the motor control board, it 
access to both 120 and 240 volts. And uh, essentially, you can see the three he heating elements here. These little wiggly lines are resistors, and, and we, this is resistive heating. So this one is the broil element, this one is the convection element, and this one is the bake element. And you can see power comes out here and goes around through here, and this makes a circuit that makes the, the baking element go. And uh, um, actually, it goes the other way, I suppose, because they've ganged these two returns here. So. Um, power comes out to run the baking element and then returns here, or power comes out to run the convection element and then returns here. Well, up on top here, this is the lock motor, the, um, uh, the convection motor, and the, and the lamps for the oven. And, uh, um, uh, and over here is where the oven temperature sensor goes. So this is an uh, uh, element that uh, resistance changes as it heats, and uh, this is, information is passed up to the UI board, and he can um, decide what temperature the oven is at and decide whether to turn, you know, the, the juice to the heating elements on and off. And I thought this is what the problem was going to be, that this was saying uh, the oven's always cold no matter what, so the computer never wanted to turn the um, the burners on, or the, not the burners, the heating elements on, uh, but obviously since we did the sensor check, uh, the computer thinks this is okay. So um, that kind of made this less of a, a suspect. Uh, here is the warming drawer sensor. Uh, here is where the meat probe plugged in. Uh, here's the door latch, uh, door sensor closed, and the door latch, uh, which locks it for, for self-cleaning, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Bosch calls all of these connection points X's for connection, I, X connection, I don't know. Um, and uh, and the, everything with a K in here is a relay, and a relay is a, a mechanical switch that you put current in it and it closes or opens. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do. And they use that to let the little microprocessor, which puts out fairly low voltage, control the great big current of, uh, of heating. And honestly, you turn on bake, you're running like 2,000 watts, and you turn on the broiler, you're running another 1,000 watts. It's, you know, these, uh, these things suck a lot of power. Well, they go on a 30 amp breaker, 240, 30 amp breaker. Um, but over here is the interesting side. This is the, the kind of the power bus view of this um, to conceptually kind of understand how power is, is used into the system. And so in split phase residential wiring uh, between L1 and L2, this is probably remedial for a lot of you, there is 240 volts between these two points. You do that. And there is 120 volts. This is, conceptually, this is in the middle, neutral, the grounded conductor is in the middle. So between L1 and neutral, you have 120 volts. And between L2 and neutral, you have 120 volts. So given that all three um, wires are being brought into the control board here, here, and here, the control board, uh, or the, the, the uh, what do I say, the oven part of the unit and the control board and the relay board has access to both uh, 120 and 240 volt power. How do they use it? Well, a lot of this stuff is uh, 120 volt. You can see here the neutrals on the outside in L1. So anything connected between the two outsides is running on 120 volts. So that's all the stuff on top of the oven. These are the four uh, knobs, uh, switches in the knobs to run the igniters. Um, these are the uh, lights, uh, and these are the convection motor and the uh, door latch motor. All that stuff's running on 120, as is the uh, UI control board itself is running on 120. And then when we told the control board to do bake, it sent a signal down, and at least two of the latches we heard were this one, which I guess is X, what is that, X15 I wrote, and X16 close. And when that happens, then leg two, that's L2 there, is connected to L1 and 240 volts goes through the bake element and it heats up. Well, we're not getting any heat. Yet we heard click, click, click. So at least we heard click, click for that. What's the third click? Another relay. I don't know which one, but it sure seems like uh, the relays are closing. And then the other thing is all of our heating elements are out. Um, if a relay was failing or stuck, you'd only expect one or two to go out. Like if this went out, uh, you couldn't convect or this went out, you couldn't bake. If this one went out, you couldn't bake or convect. So the fact that all of ours are out uh, means that power is not coming into the system at all. And if you look, the only thing using L2, leg two from the circuit breaker panel, from the plug, are the heating elements, which is now telling me that L2 is probably dead, which is so deceptive because, you know, the control board, everything seems to be working. That's because the control board and everything is using 120. What are the odds that L2 would go out and leave L1 up? 
I, uh, and working, I guess it's fairly rare. Long time viewers of this channel will know I've been screwing around in my electrical panel a lot to put in um, a critical load uh, sub panel and for a, a generator plug, uh, which we used a lot here in rainy California these last month, <laughs> the storm after storm after storm. I'm in the, uh, um, the Santa Cruz area of California and, and uh, we had a lot of evacuations and mudslides. We got through it fine, just a few power outages and stuff, but. Uh, uh, a lot of people didn't do as well. So we're glad that's over. That's the first sunny day in a long time. But it seems like we should go down to the electrical panel and see what the heck is going on uh, with the breaker for this. If the breaker has failed or if the wire has fallen out or is loose or is arcing in there, it could be a pretty dangerous situation. So let's go see if that's actually what it is. And here's the panel. And I'm not used to not being raining, I'll tell you. And let's see if that holds that up. And the oven is here. And this is leg one and leg two. And of course they have to be tied together so that if one blows, they both blow. Uh, that's on. Turn it off. Turn it on, feels fine. Okay, so don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing or been drinking. Uh, Cause not only are there voltages in here that can kill you and I haven't turned off the main breaker or anything, but uh, you know, if you're running stuff in and out, you get arc flashes, it can make <laughs> big explosions. So it can be pretty, pretty dangerous, but I'm an idiot, so I'll go ahead and give it a shot here. Okay, first let's turn the juice off on this little guy and now give these wires a tug. That seems pretty tight. Actually, they both seem pretty tight. Dang. <laughs> I was hoping this would be kind of easy. Let's check the uh, power coming out of those. So I don't know if you can see the meter display. It's uh, way down here and I'm probably gonna be in your way, but let me turn the power back on and we will measure from the neutral bar. Excuse my arm, it's probably in the way, blocking you entirely. And I'll put it on the black. There we go, 120 volts. Put it on the red, also 120 volts. So doggone it, this thing looks like it's working fine. And yet, and yet. So do we have to pull the oven out and test the plug at that end? Has there been a break along the way? Or have I completely misdiagnosed this? Don't know at this point. Man, you know, I really don't want to pull that range out. I still want this to be a bad connection here. I'm gonna check this a little further here. I'll turn that off. That is in there. They're both in there. I still, let me... I think I'm gonna look at it anyway. I'm sure I torqued these down to spec and everything too, but... Let's see if we get this up. Oh. Sorry, wife. Well, doggone it, of course they look fine, pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a clean bill of health. And I think I'm gonna go into the house and, and inspect the cable run from here to the a stove plug because even that is easier than trying to pull the stove out of the wall. So a cursory inspection of the wires under the house didn't reveal any obvious problems so we did indeed wind up pulling the range out from the wall, took the doors and grates and drawer out and, and uh, slid it out and fortunately I had my wife to help me and then clean up the 10 years of food and crap uh, on the floor and on the sides of this thing. But uh, now we're ready to check the power to this outlet and see if uh, if our plug is good and I expect this to be an a NEMA uh, what an L what, L1430 because this should be modern four wire connection yeah I like this meter it's cheaper than the fluke but I don't mind banging it around a little bit the only problem is it always comes up in DC mode and you almost never want to do DC so we'll go ahead and put the black on the Neutral, which is the L-shaped connector, and we'll put this on X. There we go. Let's it for a second. We've got 121. Come on. Can I hold it there? Okay, 120. And on Y, leg two. It's, come on. It's hard to 120. So the plug looks good. Um, and nothing between ground, and if I go across the two, we should have 240. 
241, can check the ground maybe. Can't, so the ground is so big. There we go. So equipment safety ground looks okay. 120 there, we can also do this side. Come on. 120 there. So the plug is all right. So the problem is indeed inside the stove. So let's turn our attention there. So here's the back of the oven, the schematic as advertised. And the first thing I wanna do is take off this little plate, which would give me access to where the power cord has been wired in, just to see if maybe uh, the L has fallen off out of the power cord. Um, and no, it has not, unfortunately. Although I'm gonna check the continuity of the power cord. Actually, what I could do is just plug it in and measure to see if electricity is getting all the way to these terminals here before we take the back off. So this is leg one and this is leg two. I probably would have wired those the other way just for to be nice. But anyway, this is hot now. And there's 240 between them on these terminals. And 120 there. And 120 there. So uh, we're good. Power's getting into the stove. So let's unplug this again and we'll take the back off. Nothing special, you know, just a number two Phillips. Well, it turns out this backing plate is not just a plate, it's an L shaped piece of metal. It's uh, attached down here as well. And the power cord is connected to this, so hang on. See if we can get a nut driver on these. Take the power cord off. Oops. And then you have your neutral to the power bus, and then this is modern, so uh, the ground goes right to the uh, metal chassis. Uh, in the olden days, they used to double up on the neutral and the safety ground. So now, with the power cord disconnected but still attached to this metal black plate, we ought to be able to lift this whole thing out. There it comes, and then I'll unclamp the power cord so we can hotwire it without the back, which is exactly what Bosch doesn't want us to do. And oh, look at all the dirt and stuff in here. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, let me go full handheld here so you can see what we're doing. So there's the power cord, and the back's gone now, and I've hotwired it back into the terminal blocks. And then this is the um, relay uh, power board, as advertised, the uh, convection motor, the igniter box. So just looking at this right away, you can see that uh, this is L1 in the diagram because all of our hot stuff is going off to uh, that board. And then there's only one wire coming off of L2, this black wire, and that's to feed the other side of the burner. So we know there's current to here, but now we got to see why it's not getting to here and then poke around in this board. So let me look at the schematic for a minute. Okay, so I'm learning my way around a little bit. This connection at the top of the board is for the motors and lights, the light wire, and that's probably why these little relays are, are for, for lights and motors. This uh, here is the uh, oven light, and uh, as I said, this is the convection motor, and you can see there all this like, like spidery wire. But then we get down here to the interesting stuff. So as we just said, uh, power uh, on L2 goes in here and here, uh, but uh, bake is blue. So this is the blue wire, and if you follow it down, you can see it connects to the end of the burner in the bottom of the oven. And then on the other side, the orange wire uh, comes back to complete the circuit. Uh, where does it do that? I just saw it. It's right by this uh, here. And uh, the purple is the convection. So you have bake and convection, 
and um, and convection heater is hiding right there. So that's the convection heater. Um, maybe the ring it makes a ring around this uh, this fan. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get some help here and try to uh, figure out what's going on. So my lovely wife is holding the camera and we just ran some tests that I want to share with you because anyway. Uh, so we put it back in test mode and she's going to go over and, and hit start now to turn on the bake cycle. And we hear the three relays go click, click, click again. And now if I measure, and you come around here and kind of show what I'm doing as best you can. You might have to get a little aggressive here. So uh, first off, right away, I can measure the two ends of the burner. And uh, lo and behold, there's 240 volts there. I don't have this in a place that you might be able to see it or she might be able to take a picture of it. So let's do that. So, so there you go. You got 200 and 39 volts on your uh, burner loaded, and so the darn thing is actually heating up. And in fact, if I uh, go to the orange wire here to neutral, we'll get 120. And if I go to the uh, bake is blue, we'll also get 120. So the thing's working fine, but uh, we didn't, you know, fix anything except we've been screwing with the connections and stuff. Uh, so now I don't know if it's an intermittency or uh, somewhere or... Uh, you know, if we've done something, I'll check the broiler. So what we did with the service mode is we put it to test the broiler. And so we turned the broiler on and measured up here and we got 240 volts. And then we set it to ring to measure the convection heater ring. And I put the probes here and here and we got 240 volts. So they're all getting power. They're all heating up. The whole darn thing's working fine. So did we change something as we were, you know, moving it around or is there some intermittency we don't know about and is it going to cycle correctly? So I think we'll probably just push this thing in and uh, leave the back off and live with it for a little while and see if it's going to behave itself or if uh, some other problem creeps up. Oh my God, I'm fried. I just spent the last three hours putting this thing back in. Uh, putting the back on wasn't the hard part. Uh, leveling it turned out to be the big pain. But uh, it's a month later. We've been cooking meals with this thing. It works great. Uh, so I don't know what was wrong. If I had been smart, I would have tried to use this thing the, the minute I walked in from working on the panel outside to see if that actually changed anything. But I didn't do that. Instead, I pulled it out and plugged and unplugged the plug and did a bunch of other stuff. So I introduced more than one variable. So now it's impossible to know exactly what happened. Anyway, the time lapse you're looking at shows me putting the, the back back on it. it. Took me a while to figure out exactly how it slots back in and find all the screws again and everything. And then I went ahead and looked at the plug it plugs into in case just the action of me taking the plug in and out had, had uh, jarred something that was loose, but all the wires back there looked okay. Uh, the guy who did this wiring is, is, is pretty good. I mean, I would have used a double gang box for a uh, 220 like this. I, I just like a little more room, but you know, other than that, it seems like it was fine. But then I said, oh, I'll level the, I'll level the oven beca because uh, it's always been kind of tilted down towards the back left corner and, you know, and you're frying stuff and the oil all kind of goes to one side of the pan. Not dramatically, but enough to be annoying. And um, boy, I started to uh, pull this thing in and out and do it. And uh, um, at one time I smelled gas and I said, oh my gosh, I've broken the gas line. So I whipped it out real fast. And turns out I just hit one of these knobs in the front of the machine um, and was releasing gas through a burner. So then I was careful after that. But I went in and out and in and out and in and out. And then I finally got it level, but it was really low. I'd taken all the play out of all the, the legs that screw in. And it's almost impossible to level this thing because the back of this area falls off. So it's not level with the front. And uh, so I had it level, uh, but it was really low. And I started to put the things back in and I thought, oh, my wife will never let me get away with this. So, <laughs> so I, I did it again. I tried to do measurements and stick cutting boards under it and get it. And then finally, I figured out that every time I was pushing it in, the wheels were turning. So by the time I got to the back, most of the play was out. So I finally uh, measured, took the, took the back legs out two centimeters and then held this thing back as I pushed it in, uh, held the top of it back as I pushed it in. And that finally uh, got the height, you know, relatively correct. And, and then I was able to um, adjust the front. So it's almost level in both directions. It's pretty, pretty close. I mean, the bubble's between the lines. It's not perfectly between the lines, but it's all right. Anyway, if any of you know a better way to level these darn stoves, I don't, you know, when you can't get to the back of the back legs without pulling it out, it's a huge, uh, 
a huge pain. I, my fancy dishwasher here has a cable going to the back, so you can adjust the back legs from the front, which is pretty cool. But anyway, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.